We're live. All right, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Welcome All Park for our fourth uh, Tuesday City Council meeting. As you can see, we are not in our normal meeting location at Southwest Art Center because we are putting on the last of the 20th anniversary season of True Colors Theaters productions. Uh, that series, He-Man Ball, I highly recommend you go see it. It is a great show. Uh, Mr. Clerk, go ahead and uh, call the roll whenever you are ready. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of the City Council and the public. This is the regular meeting of the City of South Fulton City Council, September 26. Roll call. The Honorable Catherine F. Rall, District 1. Present. The Honorable Carmelita Gums, District 2. Present. The Honorable Helen Z. Willis, District 3. Present. The Honorable J.C. Sebastian, District 4. Present. The Honorable Corey A. Reeves, District 5. Accounted for. The Honorable Natasha Williams Brown, District 6. Present. The Honorable Linda B. Pritchett, District 7. Here. And the Honorable Mayor Khalid. Present. Mr. Mayor, you have a quorum. All right, please sound the next item. Next item is the invocation. I don't see the chaplain here. Uh, I saw Corporal Neesmith earlier. But he's not in the room currently. Is there, is there a pastor in the house or a deacon that would like to lead us in prayer? All right, I'll do it. Uh, Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing us all together. Please sit on our tongues and make sure that as we debate that we um, do it in a respectful way. Thank you for all the citizens that come that have come out tonight. Bless each and every one of them, um, and everyone who could not be here, or everyone who's on their way. Give them traveling mercies in your mighty, in your mighty and matchless name. We pray. Amen. Amen. Please stand for the pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag. All right, please sound the next item. That brings us to Roman numeral five, approval of city council meeting minutes. Request council approval of city council regular meeting minutes from August 22nd, 2023. Approval of city council work session minutes from September 12th, 2023. Approval of the alcohol zoning public hearing minutes from September 12th, 2023. And the special call meeting minutes from September 5th. 2023 and September 12th, 2023. The chair will entertain a motion. I move that we approve all minutes read. Second. second. It's been properly moved and seconded. Any discussion? Seeing and hearing none, uh, we'll take that vote by a show of hands. Record that as unanimous. All right, thank you. Please sound the next item. Next item is adoption of the council agenda. And Mr. Mayor and Council, I just want to bring to your attention items 11, 12, and 13 are special use permit applications. These were inadvertently placed on the, uh, this agenda. They have to have a public hearing first, so those are being stricken. Also, the city manager is removing item 34 which is uh, ITB 2374 T. Sploss Rivertown Road at Cedar Grove Road. That item uh, is not ready and will be brought back at a, another meeting. And I, so may I have another change to recommend? All right, uh, so the chair recognizes first Councilman Reeves, I heard you first. As uh, for items 15, 16, and 17, as uh, they're all first reads. And so just to correct that for item number 17. All right, the chair recognizes District 4 Councilman Sebastian. All right, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I want to um, suggest that we take the item approving 
Um, that's up for approval to launch the Project Lifesaver. I thought it was in the teens, but I don't see it here now. It's item 21. Um, item 20, 21, yes. I want to suggest that we move that up um, from the consent agenda and place it just before the proclamation presentations because it all centers sort of around the same thing for a couple of the presentations that will be happening tonight around um, Project Lifesaver. And the families have been waiting to receive this proclamation for three months um, so that we could announce the launch of Project Lifesaver um, as we give the proclamations out. All right, can we move it to item number 19? We're gonna, well, I'm sorry, 18B. The request was to move it before the proclamation. Sir. Wait, I'm sorry. To item number seven and Where are so the on and so forth. Are there actual proclamations? Yes. Yes. Item number five. So we're going to vote on item 21 before the proclamation. If we can. Can we do that, uh, city attorney? If council votes on it to move the agenda, they can move it up. All right. Um, anything else? Yes. Mayor, I would like to recommend that we take executive session at the end of the agenda as we always do. Um, um, we get uh, residents are very critical of us taking executive session in the middle of our meetings and they have to sit and wait until we get out of our executive sessions. I know what's going to be discussed and it's nothing of emergency in nature that will require us to make our residents who have taken time out to see us do official business. And so I'm recommending that we take the executive session number nine and move it to the end of the agenda. Um, can we have a second if, if it would be all right, let's have a second executive session. Um, I don't know how this got transcribed this way, but we do have one pressing um, real estate item to discuss, and then we could do a second exe executive session afterwards. Yeah, I'm requesting that we move all executive sessions um, to the end of the agenda so we would not have to um, have our residents wait on us. There's nothing emergency in nature that will require us to make our residents wait until we have executive session. That you're aware of, but I am aware that we do have a pressing real estate item. So I am going to ask if we could just take 15 minutes to discuss that real estate item in executive mm -hmm. session. And then we can have a second executive session on all of the items uh, personnel litigation real, real estate at the end. Uh, so you're recommending that on item number nine that we go in executive session for uh, real estate only? Real estate only and then we, okay. uh, we'll add a item, we'll add an executive session, Roman numeral 28? I had to do my translation there. Uh, I'm sorry, Ro Roman number 27 will be an executive session and Roman numeral 28 will be the adjournment of the meeting whenever that executive session is over. I think it's 18. Hmm. You mean 41? I think, it's Roman. I think it's Roman numeral 18. Eight, I'm sorry. I'm not good with this. I'm not good with my Roman numerals. Uh, yes, you're right. 18. Okay. All right. Anyone else? All right, I will entertain a motion to approve the agenda as amended. I make a motion to, I move to approve agenda as amended for Tuesday, September 26th. Second. Second. All right, it's been properly moved and seconded. Let's take that vote by a show of hands. The court that is unanimous.
Perfect. All right, Mr. Clerk, please sound the next item. As amended, as the agenda was amended, that will bring us to item 21, which is request for approval of a resolution to approve and implement the Project Lifesaver Program and for other purposes. This is sponsored by Council Member J.C. Sebastian and the Police Department. So may I move to approve um, the Project Lifesaver um, as stated by the city clerk? Second. All right, it's been properly moved and seconded. Uh, Dis discussion? Is there any discussion? It seems like there is. The chair recognizes Councilman Sebastian. Um, Ms. Sobedan, if you, if you may have the police chief give a short synopsis on what is Project Lifesaver. I know we went over it in the work session, but not everyone who probably a viewing tonight really knows what it is and how it's going to be implemented. So just a couple minutes. You took her name off the list. Sorry? No. They listed it that way. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. So um, we had a resident that actually came to us because she had an autistic child and we uh, developed training for our police officers surrounding that and some issues came up um, relative to runaway autistic children or children that uh, tended to wander away from their homes. Um, in a previous life I had the opportunity to work with Project Lifesaver on people suffering from dementia and diminished capacity and there's actually these bracelets that work off of radio telemetry that allows us to find those individuals in a very quick way. And so it's helped to save the police department man hours whenever we've been able to leverage the technology. And so um, this uh, program, we believe, will be a win-win for not only the police department, but for our community as well. Uh, I the chair recognizes Councilwoman Willis. Yes, I would like to make a correction to this legislation. I'm not sure how it got left off, but um, Council Member um, Sebastian did ask for co-sponsors on this, and um, Council Member uh, Williams and, and myself, and I think Gums also. Thank you. So, so is that a, are you? A, Okay, yeah, I think, I think, there's a, I think that there's a, a substitute motion on the floor to amend the resolution to include the names of Councilwoman Gums, Willis, Reeves, and Mayor Pro Tem, Williams Brown. We have a second for that substitute motion? All right, it's been moved and seconded. Let's uh, vote on that. Show of hands. Court, that is unanimous. All right. Uh, We'll continue in uh, discussion. Is there any further discussion? All right, seeing and hearing none, uh, the chair will entertain a motion. So move, I, I shouldn't say so move because that's not proper. Um, I, really want I move to. approval of a resolution to approve and implement the Project Lifesaver program and for other purposes. I did motion already. Yeah, it, there was a substitute motion. So now we're back to this the motion. motion. To the main motion? Yes, the main motion. we're back to the main motion. All right, let's just take a vote by a show of hands. Court, that is unanimous. All right, Mr. Clerk, please sound the next item. That brings us to proclamation presentations. Tonight we have three presentations on the agenda. The first is the proclamation presentation, recognizing Kyle Watson's Day of Awareness. This is sponsored by Councilmember Sebastian. Followed by that, we will have a proclamation presentation, recognizing Tanya Newberry in Autism Branches Appreciation Day. That is also sponsored by Councilmember Sebastian. And the last proclamation is a presentation, recognizing Galileo Appreciation Day. And this is uh, sponsored by Councilmember Pritchett.
Hi again, everyone. Um, this is Kyle Watson. And um, there are very few things since I've been a council member that I, um, I take pride in doing. I, did, I think this is really at the top of the, of the list for me. Um, and I want to thank Miss Lee, Kyle's mother. We spoke on the phone several, several times. And you know, between her and the police department, they gave me the history of um, Kyle's mission to bring about change in our city. And I am very, very proud of this young man and his mom. And honestly, last night when I was thinking about um, presenting this proclamation today, I said, Jesus, help me get through it, because I don't want the waterworks to start. So if you all hear me getting a little emotional, you all would know why. Um, so here we go. Um, whereas Kyle Watson is a brave young man who has an unwavering positive attitude and passion for living life to the fullest, Kyle's love for life has allowed him to overcome significant challenges in his life since his diagnosis with autism at an early age. And whereas Kyle enjoys swimming, stuffed animals, flying kites, skating, playing with motor control cars, and hanging out with his friends. And whereas, Kyle encountered the city of South Fulton police officers and was detained. The encounter wasn't ideal since South Fulton police officers hadn't received formal training regarding how to properly engage with individuals with autism. And whereas, Kyle's experience has served as a clarion call for the South Fulton community to address the urgent need of training and education around autism for law enforcement officers. In response to Kyle's encounter, the city of South Fulton Police Department has instituted a mandatory five-hour training program for its police officers to ensure that they have the necessary skills and knowledge to work with individuals with autism. Whereas, additionally, Kyle's encounter has resulted in the city of South Fulton and its police department implementing Project Lifesaver, which is a program designed to assist in quickly locating individuals with cognitive disorders who are prone to life-threatening behavior of wandering. The collaborative effort of bringing loved ones home will increase police community relationships through public outreach programs and education. Whereas the city of South Fulton is honored to recognize Kyle's bravery and the work that his experience has inspired as a result of Kyle's strength and determination. This experience will bring added awareness to individuals with autism and demonstrate the valuable contribution that individuals with autism make to the society. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Mayor and City Council of the City of South Fulton, on behalf of over 108 residents that reside in the city, hereby proclaim and recognize Tuesday, September 26th, as Kyle Watson Day of Awareness in the City of South Fulton. Give this young man applause. So mom, mom says she doesn't want to say anything. I know she's already tearing up. Um, anybody on council who wishes to, to add anything, you guys are welcome to do, do so. Yeah, I know, he's ready to go. So I'm going to give this to him, and we're going to try and take a picture, and then let him go, because he is ready to go.
Now again, this next proclamation is um, for this young lady who is, who is a warrior for not only her own child, but she is determined and we need to be right there with her as a city. She's determined that the services that are lacking for, for um, programs around autism on the south side here, she's determined to change that. Um, I think she's a resident of District 2, unless you live in the gated community of um, Walden Park, <laughs> then you're District 4. So I'm gonna ask her, <laughs> I'm gonna ask her council member to help read this with me. Um, but this person right here to my right, she has formed an organization and we have held in District 4 for the last two years, the Autism Sensory Festival, where people have come from all over Georgia to our community to experience the Autism Sensory Festival. So I am more than, more than proud. I was gonna wait until next, next year to do this, but since we had Kyle here too, I figured it was, <laughs> it was the best thing to do to have them both here at the same time. So I'm gonna start and I, I'm gonna let Council Member Gums finish. Whereas Tanya Newberry, a resident of Atlanta, Georgia for more than 20 years, had made a profound impact in the South Fulton community and in the lives of many families impacted by children diagnosed with autism. Tanya, the mother of an 11-year-old, Alexander, knows firsthand the challenges and hardships that families encounter while raising a child diagnosed with autism from toddlerhood to young adolescence. And whereas studies show that one in 54 children are diagnosed with autism, but disparities in the timing of diagnosis and the quality and quantity of developmental therapy significantly impact the success of African-American families in dealing with, di with the diagnosis. And whereas from the perils of the pandemic, Tanya created the Autism Brand Branches, a foundation designed to connect resources of professional services with parents whose children are diagnosed with autism, and more importantly, with other families who are also experiencing similar situations. Whereas Autism Branches has enabled a community of experienced parents and therapists to circumvent the gap and resources being offered to families in the South Fulton community, with the assistance of the City of South Fulton, Tanya's foundation and support team birthed the inaugural Autism Sensory Festival starting in 2021, and the festival has developed into an annual event with more than 300 attendees from all over Georgia gathering at Wilkerson Mill Park. And whereas the resources and opportunities utilized from this festival help bring a community together, which allows families to embrace one another and offer a network of valuable services, advice, and techniques that empower parents to help their children thrive in a world filled with indifference. Now therefore be resolved, the mayor and city council of the city of South Fulton and on behalf of, on behalf of the over 108,000 residents that reside in this city, hereby proclaim and recognize today, Tuesday, September the 26th, 2023, as Tanya Newberry and Autism Branches Appreciation Day in the city of South Fulton. Congratulations. And don't you cry either. Y'all know we sensitive. Unselfishly, I created this foundation for all the people like me that need that extra support and motivation to know that you can get through it. My son is out on the playground. He saw that and he ran, so I can't get him in here. But. Um, Literally, when I started this moment in my life, you never expect your child to turn from being perfectly normal, as one would say, neurotypical child to a neurodivergent child. Um, there are people that came to me that are teachers, educators for years, other parents, and with their advice, I've been able to take my nonverbal child, and he's now semi-verbal. He wasn't reading, he's now reading. He couldn't do basic math, he can now do basic math. But it's not for the weak at heart. 
you really have to roll your sleeves up and you have to really go in this full throttle or your child might get left behind. And in no way am I criticizing teachers, but I've lived in Buckhead for 14 years and I lived in Clayton County for four years. The services are very, very narrow south of 166. And I am going to do everything I can to make sure that we have an abundance of services just like they do in Gwinnett County and Alpharetta and Buckhead and Norcross. It makes no sense. We have <laughs> the funds are abundant, but they're not coming to us. And I can't do this by myself. And it's just not for children on the spectrum. It's for kids that need that extra push in their education. A special needs teacher can only do so much with one paraprofessional. And if she has to attend to medically fragile children and the kids that are in there that want to learn, the kids who want to learn really don't have that opportunity to thrive because their hands are full. They deserve raises. They deserve two paraprofessionals per classroom. And this is something I've seen firsthand that I'm not just speaking. I've been a PTA president. I've worked in these classrooms. I've given my last dime to make sure that I can help everybody I can. But y'all can help me. My foundation is called Autism Branches. My website is www.autismbranches.org. We're getting ready for our third annual, thanks to the city of South Fulton, Autism Sensory Festival. It's April 13th next year. We need as many professionals in therapy and speech and occupational and respite services, neuro, um, neurologists, like anybody that's in the field that deals with the brain, the education, the learning aspect. We want these kids to thrive. They have the ability to work at Amazon, Google, Microsoft, and they deserve that. Thank you. Awesome. This is what community is about. So thank you so much for dumping in. When you sent the email back in 2021, I said, why not? Why not? Because our kids are important. And then when uh, Council Member Sebastian came on board, I knew you were in good hands. So it's going to keep growing each year. It's going to get bigger and bigger, and we need these resources. So congratulations again. You're welcome. Buenas tardes. Good afternoon, everyone. No, it's in English. I'm just being nice. So, um, we are so we're continuing to celebrate Hispanic, uh, Hi Hispanic Heritage History Month, and Councilwoman Gums and I are first, ge first generation Hispanic Americans, and we would like to celebrate Galeo and present them with this proclamation that she will help me read. Whereas Galeo is a nonpartisan, nonprofit organization based in Norcross, Georgia, founded in 2003, Galeo strives for a better Georgia where Latinx community is engaged civically and its contributions and concerns are recognized. The membership group, group includes people from Latin America, Central America, Mexico, the Caribbean, and Spain. And whereas Galeo focuses on increasing civic participation, of the Latinx community and developing prominent Latino leaders throughout Georgia. Through leadership initiatives such as the Galeo Institute for Leadership Cohort and the Galeo Leadership Council, the organization has been able to cultivate more knowledgeable, skilled, and committed action-oriented leaders and and whereas Galeo has been at the forefront of issues advocating, advocating for immigrant rights, substantial pay, and equal opportunities in labor, opportunities for Latinx, 
for, what is that, Latin, Latinx in technology and diversity issues related to Latinx as a whole. And whereas Galeo's impact fund has helped Latinx candidates and elected officials with endorsements during election periods to provide them with the support needed to stay competitive. And whereas through advocacy and education, over the last 10 years, Galeo has grown from 16,000 members to over 300,000 members and counting. Galeo is proudly celebrating 20 years of service and commitment to the Latinx community in Georgia, and the city of South Fulton joined them in that celebration. Now, therefore, be resolved that the Mayor and City Council do hereby proclaim Saturday, September 16, 2023, as Galeo Appreciation Day in the city of South Fulton, Georgia, even though today is Tuesday. Yes, I know. <laughs> Congratulations. Buenos dias and muchas gracias for uh, this presentation today. Uh, we are so appreciative of the recognition of the work of Galeo over the past 20 years and also of your service. We need diversity and representation at all levels of government. So what you all do here is important. And for all the people that show up to these meetings and making your voices heard, that's also important. So thank you too. Right, Mr. Clerk, would you please sound the next item? Next item on the agenda is Roman numeral eight. This is the FY 2024 budget public hearing. This is the third public hearing. All right, uh, Madam City Manager. Good evening, Mayor and Council. <clears throat> this is the final public hearing on the budget. I'm not going to be long. You've heard this presentation before. Next slide, please, Corey. The budget reflects a 0.5 mil millage rate reduction. All continuing operations are funded. We have included in our budget the 3% cost of living adjustment for all city employees and increase in our minimum wage to $20 an hour. We have, next slide, please. We have five areas of new initiatives in the budget, quality of life and public infrastructure, public safety, workforce development, future city facilities, and planning for our future. Next slide, please. The reductions that we made um, allowed us to not change the amount of base budget for continuing operations. We did not change the amount of fund balance and the impact on new initiatives is manageable. Next slide, please. And this breaks down how we made the reductions. We've already talked about that. But no major impacts to our ability to function. Our general fund budget is 126 million. Our general fund capital and one-time expenses, 23 million and 53 million other funds. Next slide. And this is a breakdown of our general fund budget and our capital budget. Next slide, please. Next slide, and then the next one. Thank you. And so you'll see our 62% of our budget is general fund, 13% special revenue, 4% for the um, solid waste enterprise fund, our tree fund, grants, we're bringing forward the American Rescue Act funding into this fiscal year. We are on a shorter timeline now to expend those funds. And as explained, we're using 12% of our budget is coming from our fund balance. 
this is a further breakdown with more detail. And these are our revenue sources. Our um, largest source of revenue continues to be property taxes at 47%. But our second largest is our local option sales tax at 27%. And that um, particular line item is the one that is growing. And you can see the other areas where we do have diversity of income streams. And our special fund revenue, TSPLOST, uh, it continues to be a very strong source of revenue at 77%. Our pedestrian safety funds are accounted for separately. Hotel Motel, East and West Side TAD have seen little growth, but we are optimistic that those will increase in upcoming years. Next slide. And expenditures by category, not like other governments. Public safety is our largest at 32%. And um, you can see the many areas where the city funds are dispersed on the expenditure side. Next slide. I did add one um, slide that you have not seen before. This is the proposed council events that we have spoken about ad nauseum. And so we have incorporated in the budget, in parks, your signature events. And to support your secondary events, we have allocated a line item in the city manager's budget to be able to support your secondary events. And we're hoping next year that we will be able to group town halls in order to maximize participation and coverage. Next slide, please. And quality of life, of note, are your big categories, street light master plan, the parks master plan, the um, some match funding for big projects, but very large um, investment in the public infrastructure in this category. Next slide. This is an area where we have dedicated funding for debt service for our future facilities. We're estimating $100 million in debt service. This would essentially be your mortgage payment um, once we embark on those large projects, as well as we have some other needs in our um, park CIP and funding for our cultural affairs. Next slide. Public safety. We've added some positions in both police and fire, as well as equipment, and embarking on our EMS, expansion of our EMS program. And workforce development, um, already talked about, the $20 minimum wage. We have plugged some funding in here for the results of the pay study, which will be back mid-October. And we are also embarking on a large reorganization of the city with the addition of new departments. And planning for the future. It said if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. And so these are areas of um, important study and uh, planning that we need to do, especially around the comprehensive plan update and um, comprehensive transportation plan update, as well as the uh, impact fee study and um, historic resources survey. And then this next slide, it's hard to read, but it is the allocation of anticipated local option sales tax, TSPLOS projects in uh, 2024. And budget adoption is actually today, not the 12th. And so with that, I am subject to your questions. All right, I'm sure everyone has questions. We're just gonna go right around. We'll go reverse order, starting with District 7, Councilwoman Linda Pritchett. Thank you for recognizing me, Mr. Mayor. Um, I think that this bears saying, um, because when we were going through the budget process, um, we heard from citizens that wanted to have some type of relief or um, wanted to lessen their tax liability when it came to their property taxes. And um, I just found out about two weeks ago about the 2023 property tax relief grant. Although this doesn't affect our budget, it affects the citizens. So uh, Governor Kemp 
had uh, come up with this grant, which gives you homestead tax relief in the amount of $18,000 per household. So that we did roll back our millage rate, which has nothing to do with this, but these, this will give you an $18,000 reduction in your homestead of a, as a homestead exemption. So that should help lessen your tax liability for your property tax. Um, Ms. Subedan, you, you send it out to many of us if you want to expound in any way on this. I think it's up to 18,000. Um, it's up to, right, it's not a straight 18, it's up to 18,000. Um, my, my understanding is that um, the city will, through the taxing authority, will receive credits for that from the state. And so we will be made whole because we've already counted on that revenue in order to balance our budget. But property owners will see that. The one thing I will say for the record is this is a one-time relief and if it's not reapproved re in the next calendar year, you will see a sharp increase in your property taxes if that relief goes away. And so um, I want to kind of remind everybody that it, it's a one-time tax holiday, but if it's not renewed in 2025 then or in the 24th session, then that 18, up to 18,000 will be back in your taxable property value. So that's just something for people to keep in mind. And I yield, thank you. All right, thank you for that important footnote, Madam City Manager. Uh, the chair recognizes Mayor Pro Tem, Natasha Williams Brown. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I, all the questions that I had, I already discussed with the city manager, and so I have nothing for this session. All right, thank you, Councilman Reeves, District 5. Uh, thank you, um, Madam City Manager, and uh, for presenting this. As um, at the last presentation before approval, I asked that um, particularly for some of the projects um, that was for the sidewalks and for the traffic calming measures, uh, that we have a, um, a roadmap to success. And so uh, will you be presenting that to us coming forth? and so that we can get that to the constituent. Thank you, much. Absolutely. All right, the chair recognizes District 4, Councilman Sebastian. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, and thank you, Ms. Subedan, to you and your team in finance for going through the budget and, um, and finding a way that we could save the citizens a little money. I think that's a job well done. I think you and the team and uh, as a city, we, we, we should be proud because in essence, we are saying we are given a tax cut, we are increasing services, right, because the budget is increasing over last year. And we are doing some things planning for the future. And as well as giving employees a minimum of $20. So as a city, we ought to be very proud of this budget. And I look forward to working with you and the team over the year to make the impacts that this budget should have on our city. So thank you all very much. And thank you colleagues for voting to cut the millage rate um, by 0.5 mil. The chair recognizes District 3 Councilwoman Helen Z. Willis. Thank you. I want to thank Mrs. Subedan and her entire team for the tireless efforts that they put forth bringing us this um, fiscal year 2024 budget. Um, I've been on the council for six years and this has been the most organized <coughs> and detailed that I have seen. Um, I also want to uh, make note that the uh, 2023 property tax relief grant, um, as Ms. Subedan stated, it is a one-time grant and it is up to 18,000 for those who own property go ahead uh, and go to the tax commissioner's website and pull your tax um, bill. It is already applied. Um, I looked at mine today and it did reduce my property tax by about 50%. 
Um, and so uh, the meal ro the meal rate rollback will apply to the 2024 taxes. Um, when we uh, so um, as Ms. Subedan stated, you will see a um, an increase next year because this is a one time um, tax relief uh, that the General Assembly passed. Uh, it is not for those who um, you will not get this tax relief in the form of a check. It is applied to your property tax. But what you might want to do is call your mortgage company and have a conversation with your mortgage company because some mortgage companies do analysis at the end of the year. And if you have an overpayment, sometimes they will go ahead and send that overpayment back to you. And so I would suggest that if you just uh, have that conversation with your mortgage company. Um, and this tax relief does not apply to rental property. So, um, and this is not a tax relief that was afforded to you all by our local government. It did come from the General Assembly. So thank your state uh, legislators when you see them for a job well done. Thank you. Um, I yield. All right, thank you. The chair recognizes District 2 Councilwoman Carmelita Gomes. Only thing I have to say is um, thank you, Ms. Subodan, again for doing an excellent job. I don't have anything else. I'll say whatever comments I have for later on, but good job on the budget. Thank you. The chair recognizes District 1 Councilwoman Dr. Rob. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I also want to reiterate what my colleagues said, but I also want to um, give a, a shout out to the mayor because I think getting to the, the annual calendar just made sense. While it was a long discussion, it was necessary. And I think scaling back will um, improve the impact and the attendance we have across uh, city events. So uh, step in the right direction. Oh, thank you. All right, with that, uh, Mr. Clerk, please sound the next item. We actually did have one person who signed up for the, the budget oh, I'm hearing. Sorry, yes, we do have a budget hearing. Yes. All right, uh, come forth. Yes, the speaker was Ms. Jewel Johnson. Good evening, Mayor and Council. I'm Jewel Johnson, and I reside at 4660 Auckland Lane. Uh, I believe it's 38 years now. If not, it's pretty soon will be 38 years. I want to talk about the budget because, first of all, uh, I am glad to see that we got through the budget area, but there are so many of us citizens that still have quite a few questions as it relates to the budget. And I can see that we did put $100,000 in the budget this time after three times that we've asked that we have money in our budget for impact fees. I'd like to see that that three, I mean that $100,000 that we have in the budget actually goes to make sure that we get that um, impact study because we cannot charge Ms. Sudan for impact fees if we do, have not done that study. That's very crucial, and it takes away the stigma of it looking like we are accepting money under the table with these developers, especially we, when we have our council people working with developers on projects that they have to vote on. That is unethical, and it is illegal. And we're, I am asking that we not do that. And one of the other main things that bothers not only me and my family, but a lot of people that I talk to throughout the city. And you all know I'm in all of the districts because I care and I love the city of South Fulton. One of the people that helped pay for what happened to get us through to where we are right now. And I'm not going anywhere. I love it here and I just want 
everybody to understand that, Mr. Mayor, you have the authority to go ahead and do that forensic audit, and I'm asking you to do it. You do not have to ask the, uh, the council for permission. That is in our chart. And I'm challenging you to go ahead to do that. I will be one of the top supporters of you doing that, and many other citizens. We must have a forensic audit. Ladies and gentlemen, Ms. Jewel Johnson, thank you, Ms. Johnson. Uh, do we have any other speakers? We have no other uh, card submitted for the budget, no. Okay, all right, uh, the chair recognizes District 1, Councilwoman Dr. Rao. Thank you, I just wanna take a point of privilege um, because I think it's important to educate the public. Any project that comes before this council if they have worked with a developer, and if that developer has given them any money, the developer and the city council person has to divulge that. And so I don't want any citizen to walk out of this door hearing a statement. I think everybody on this council, if they felt something unethical was going on, that they should file an ethics complaint with the city or the state if necessary. But our process requires any developer to divulge that information as well as the council person to refrain from voting on that issue. So just want to be clear. Um. The chair recognizes District 3, Councilwoman Helen Z. Willis. We have a community department of regulatory affairs process. It is not illegal for us to converse with developers who anticipate uh, developing in our city, in our specific districts. As a matter of fact, developers uh, tend to reach out to council members so that they can engage with community members uh, prior to entering the rezoning process, if it is a rezone, um, so that they can make sure not only they are following the zoning requirements and the future land use requirements so that they can get a pulse and a sense of the community of what they desire. So I um, refute any allegations that we're doing anything unethical as it relates to developers and as stated, if there is anything unethically being done, we do have a process where an ethics complaint can be filed. So for District 3 residents, I will continue to march as I always do, and that is in collaboration with you. If developers come to this community, I will make sure if it's on a welcome all side, we always send out notices and we meet and we discuss and if it's on the Cliftondale side, I ask developers to work with my Cliftondale community. We want to make sure that we have development that is desirable both for the community and make sure that developers are bringing desirable development to our city. Thank you. And I look forward to working with the community and any developer who would like to develop here in District 3. Have a nice day. Chair recognizes Madam City Manager. Everybody finished speaking. I just wanted to say thank you for the kind words and to acknowledge the team. It was truly a team effort. Everybody from the hard work done in every um, budget meeting by the budget analysts and the rest of the finance team, as well as those who worked on the millage, as well as public affairs for helping us with our graphics and notifying the public. And thank you all for your thoughtful questions and for your support. Thank you, Madam City Manager. Stole my thunder. I just wanna double tap everything that she said. There has been a flurry of activities when you go through the halls, um, city halls around this budget and our entire finance department almost is as new as Ms. Subedan. So you all came in and really took the reins and did a lot uh, with a little in a short amount of time. Thank you all so much. Uh, Matt, uh, the, the 
uh, district councilwoman is asking if you all would just stand to be acknowledged by our audience and fellow staff. They're so modest. <laughs> Mr. Oche, our CFO, and that is his team around them. They're just, you know, they're just modest people that, that, that do the work. Uh, we're the ones that want to be on camera. So thank you so much, though. Um, Mr. Clerk, please sound the next item. Yes, sir, Mr. Mayor, that brings us to Roman numeral eight, number seven. It's the second read and request approval of an ordinance to adopt the fiscal year 2024 budget for each fund of the city of South Fulton, Georgia, appropriating the amount showing in each fund as expenditures expenses, adopting the several items of revenue anticipations, prohibiting expenditures or expenses from exceeding the actual funding available and for other lawful purposes. Mr. Mayor, move for approval of the 2024 budget. Second. He, had, he, didn't, he didn't call. Oh, I'm sorry. The chair will entertain a motion to Good. approve the resolution as sounded by the clerk. I move that we approve the fiscal 2024 budget. Second. It's been properly moved and seconded. <laughs> we'll just take a vote by a show of hands. Record that is unanimous. All right. Uh, please sound the next item. Next item is item eight, second read and request approval of an ordinance to amend Title 11, Parks and Recreation, Chapter 8, Arts and Entertainment of the City of South Fulton Code of Ordinances for the purpose of amending South Fulton Public Arts Ordinance. This is sponsored by the, by the Cultural Affairs Department. All right, the chair will entertain a motion to approve the resolution as sounded by the clerk. I move to approve the ordinance, amendments to the Arts and Entertainment uh, Code under the Parks and Recreation uh, Section, Chapter 8. Second. All right, it's been properly moved and seconded. Any discussion? Seeing and hearing none. Or seeing and hearing none. Uh, I'll take a vote by show of hands. Record that it's unanimous. All right, Mr. Clerk, please sound the next item. That brings us to Roman numeral 9, Executive Session. All right, I will entertain a motion to go into executive session for 15 short minutes to discuss real estate. I move um, to go into executive session for 15 minutes to discuss personnel litigation real estate. Just, just real estate. If, okay, just real estate. Second. All right, it's been properly moved and seconded. Uh, let's take a vote by show of hands. Court that is unanimous. We are recessed at 5 p.m. for executive session.
Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your patience. We apologize for our dilatory deliberations. We did have some important matters to discuss and got back here as soon as possible. Uh, Mr. Clerk, uh, we, uh, I'll take a motion to reconvene. Did you all do that already? All right, uh, let's do a vote by a show of hands. Record that is five to zero. We are reconvened at 5.42 p.m. All right, let's go ahead and sound the next item. Next item, it's Roman numeral number 10, under planning, zoning, and permits, alcohol license, rezoning, variance, and special use permit cases for vote where noted. The first one is alcohol license case number nine. It's a case from Tom Waters doing business as Club Wax seeks an alcohol license for the consumption of sale of wine, beer, and distilled beverages at 4375 Commerce Drive, Southwest Atlanta, Georgia, 30336. It's located in District 1. I will entertain a motion. I move that we um, deny the alcohol license for the consumption of sale and wine at 4375 Commerce Drive. Second. All right, it's been properly moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? The chair recognizes District 3 Councilwoman Helen Zenobia Willis. I just want to go on a record to say that um, although this is not my thing, I do not, I am not in agreement, and our code is our code. And, um, you know, we can't get around it. But I am not agreement, in agreement with adversely impacting a business um, because they were annexed into the city of South Fulton. Um, these businesses that are coming before us um, were operating when it was Fulton County. I did have a conversation with our police chief and our police chief um, did not say that these uh, businesses were causing a lot of problems as far as it relates to crime. Um, and so that would have given me my hesitation. To I would get into those nature discussions. Yes, that would, that would have been my hesitation um, to, you know, about this. Um, but these businesses were operating before we became um, on the county side legally because the county did allow for uh, this type of licensing um, but our current code here in the city of South Fulton does not allow for this, this type of licensing and so um, as a small business owner I know how it is how hard it is to uh, work to build your business and to make it financially viable um, I am very sorry that you were being adversely impacted because you were annexed into the city of South Fulton. I yield. Seeing and hearing no further comment, uh, we will do a vote uh, by show of hands. I record that as unanimous. The motion was to, de de to deny. Yes. So that vote was six to zero to deny. All right, uh, Mr. Clerk, please sound the next item. Next item is item 10. It's an application by Fanny's Incorporated, doing business as Fanny's Cabaret. Seeks an alcohol license for the consumption sales of wine, beer, and distilled beverages at 4401C, Fulton Industrial Boulevard, Atlanta, Georgia, 30336. This is located in District 1. The chair will entertain a motion. I move to deny the alcohol license for 4401 Seat Foot and Industrial Boulevard. Second. It's been properly moved and seconded. Uh, is there any discussion? Yes. The chair recognizes once again District 3 Councilwoman Helen Willis. Same thing. Um, our code does not allow for adult entertainment and alcohol licensing. Um, on the county side, these businesses were allowed to operate. Um, According to the police chief, they did not cause a lot of problems, but our code does not permit um, alcohol licensing and adult entertainment here in the city of South Fulton. 
Um, I apologize to the business owners because it does appear that you are being adversely impacted because you're annex because you are annex in the city of South Fulton. Thank you. All right. Seeing and hearing no further discussion, I uh, will take another vote by a show of hands. I record at a six zero to deny. All right, please sound the next item. Items 11, 12, and 13 were previously removed from the agenda. That brings us to item 14, which is a first read of a resorting ordinance for an application by PVJ Reholdings, LLC, requesting the rezoning from AG1 to C1 and a concurrent variance to reduce the north zoning buffer from 25 feet to 10 feet, reduce the north improvement setback from 10 feet to zero feet, to reduce the east zoning buffer from 50 feet to 25 feet, and to reduce the parking space requirement from 47 spaces to 29 spaces at the parcel located at the corner of Old National Highway and Cabaret Terrace, located in District 6. All right, the chair will entertain a motion. It's first read. Oh, I'm sorry, this is first read. Uh, please sound the next item. Next item is also a first read, number 15 of a rezoning ordinance for an application by Kenneth Wilson to rezone from AG1 to M1, a property located at 2888 Sullivan Road, College Park, Georgia, 30337. This is located in District 5. This is a first read as well. All right, is there any, uh, all right, seeing and hearing no discussion, please sound the next item. Next item is item 16, which is first read. First I'm sorry, read. I, I think there's been some confusion. Is this first read, second read? First read. First read. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah, item 16 is a first read as well, a rezoning ordinance for an application by Randy Arnold Jr. requesting to rezone from AG1 and sub A to MIX at a property located at 5425 and 5445 Buffington Road, South Fulton, Georgia, 30349. It's located in District 5. It's first read. All right. Uh, is there any discussion? Seeing and hearing none. Mr. Clerk, please sound the next item. Next item is item 17, case number Z23-011. This is a second read and request approval <coughs> of an ordinance to rezone from R3 to R5A and a property located at 0 SDs Drive. This is located in District 5. The chair recognizes Councilman Reeves. I move to defer to the chair. Second. All right, it's been properly moved and seconded. Uh, any further discussion? No. Seeing and hearing none, uh, I'll take a vote by a show of hands. I'll record that as unanimous. Motion to defer this item to the October 10th council meeting. All right, please sound the next item. That brings us to the consent agenda. All right, I'll entertain a motion. I move to approve the consent agenda items, items 18 through 24. Second. All right, it's been properly moved and seconded. Any discussion? The chair recognizes District 7, Councilwoman Linda Pritchett. Thank you for recognizing me, Mr. Mayor. Um, I would like to point out in um, number 23 that this, um, approval to accept the congressional appropriation of $805,000 um, came from our Congressman David Scott. So many thanks to our Congressman for making money available for public safety purposes. And I yield. All right. uh, <coughs> Seeing and hearing no further comments, uh, I'll take a vote by a show of hands. Record that is unanimous, and for the record, item 21 was previously voted on. So, perfect. All right, and that brings us to my favorite part of the meeting where we get to hear from all of you. Uh, Mr. Clerk, would you please read the rules and announce the public commenters? We're at the public comment portion of today's meeting. I'll read the rules uh, for providing public comment. Um, the city of South Fulton believes that any resident or business owner located in the city limits should be afforded the opportunity to address the mayor and city council. 
provided that designated rules are followed by the speaker. Any city of South Fulton resident or business owner who wishes to address the mayor or council, city council and offer public comment on any item on the agenda may do so during the public comment period of the, of the meeting. Comments should be limited to two minutes per speaker. A bell will signal the end of each speaker's time. Public comments shall be limited to only those items appearing on the current city council meeting agenda. Each speaker must complete and submit a request to speak form in its entirety prior to the beginning of the meeting. The person or business owner desiring to speak should rise, address the city council, and when recognized, state their name, residential or business address, the agenda item they are addressing, and the city council district in which they reside. All remarks shall be addressed to the council as a whole and not to any one member. Speakers may not disrupt the city council meeting by speaking for too long, by being unduly repetitive, or by extending discussion on, on or of irrelevancies. Speakers may not employ obscenities or threats of violence in the comments. Anyone who demonstrates these behaviors should have their microphone disabled and if necessary should be removed from the meeting. Speakers should not be allowed to make remarks that have been legally recognized to not be protected speech, comments addressing the council. And then lastly, speakers may not use public comments to campaign for political office either for themselves or on behalf of other candidates for the purpose of eliminating political influence on city employees and encouraging orderly and efficient meetings. With those rules read into the record, Mr. Mayor and Council, we have we have five cards that we received. Um, as I call your name, please come to the center microphone, state your name, address, the item you are referencing, and the city council district in which you reside. First speaker for tonight's public comment is Marcia Clemendor. Uh, next is Jasmine Hooper, Jewel Johnson, Mel Keaton, and Jermaine Lojet. Walk and approach this mic right here. Feel free to adjust it if you need to. Okay. <clears throat> My name is Marcia Clemendor, and I live on um, 2870 Keenan Road, and that's in the Pine Tree subdivision, and I believe that's District 6. And the reason I'm here, I'm speaking on item number 39, which is Bright View Landscape. I noticed that they're up for renewal as well as you're asking for a 3% increase on this new contract. My concern is that I've seen them do the landscape and all cleaning the curb. According to their contract, they're supposed to mow, define the curb edges, remove buildup from gutters and curbs, and spray the weeds. And I was watching them doing one particular street. They did it in at the bridge. Then when they came to doing the entire street, they just used a weed whacker and just did the top of it. I specifically asked the gentleman, aren't you gonna do something about the grass that's growing over the curb? Oh no, I said, what about the grass that's growing out of the, con out of the concrete? Oh no, 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 we're not supposed to go there. I just, I'm supposed to do the top. So what I'd like to see happen here is that since they are responsible for doing these things and it has not been done, we need to have some type of quality control um, because to be spending almost a million dollars and we're not getting the results that we're paying for, that's unacceptable. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. Next is Ms. Jasmine Hooper. Atlanta American Heart Association. I'm the community advocacy director. Um, and I'm here to talk about agenda item 14.30. And um, that is the introduction of an ordinance to amend the current smoke-free air laws to provide an exemption um, from the current smoking regulations listed under section 6-1012 for um, Grown and Sexy Tavern located on 3461 Roosevelt Highway, Suite 15. Um, 
In January of 2021, the city of South Fulton sent a strong message that the burden of tobacco and tobacco-related health disparities and inequities on the community would not be expanded under your watch by passing a strong, comprehensive smoke-free ordinance. This ordinance, as it states, prohibits smoking in all public places and places of employment as stated in section 6-1007 and 6-1007. Six, excuse me, dash 1008. Cigar bars with a license to operate as a tobacco business as of November 1st, 2020 are the only establishments where smoking is not regulated as stated in section 6 1012. Therefore, the opening and operation of this establishment, which seems to have opened in March of 2023, is actually um, as a bar lounge or place of employment that allows smoking indoors is in violation of the city's current ordinance. So amending the city of South Fulton's current smoke-free laws for a business that is already unfortunately operating illegally would not only make the city vulnerable to potential lawsuits for, from other local establishments who are um, operating in accordance with the ordinance, and um, it also signals to others that the city of South Fulton is willing to negotiate its current health standards as requested. It is well documented that smoking and secondhand smoke exposure have been proven to cause heart disease and stroke. So I urge you to consider not amending this ordinance. Thank you so much. Thank you. Next is Ms. Jewel Johnson. Ms. Johnson, I don't see her in the room. Next to Mr. Mel Keaton. How are you? Mel Keaton, Alice Sheba Drive. Uh, I represent um, Hampton Oaks Homeowners Association, and I'm the president of the association, Neighborhood Watch. And uh, on the consent agenda, I see 19 and 3. You have the townhomes that were already, I guess, on the consent the consent agenda that I guess you approved it. Um, but I fought really hard to get Crown out of South Fulton uh, to establish some new, better development, which was Camden Manor, Sierra States, and Oakhurst Glen. So that was a part of Hampton Oaks, the Martha Stewart whole build out. So we established that. I signed an agreement for them to stop and discontinue their development and bring in other developments with D.R. Horton and made agreements with them. Uh, in return, um, they are using our name. We, they haven't really sat down with us at all to talk about what they're doing. And we know these developers, when they leave, they normally leave and steamroll us. They don't have any plan, they just, you know, uh, and I just don't trust it. We don't trust it. So we're asking uh, before going any further with this development that they sit down with us and they have an opportunity to sit down with us. We, have, we actually have an HOA meeting tomorrow at 7.30 to show us what they're trying to do. Because I've, I have the plan for that initial um, development that was approved through Fulton County, and it was supposed to do, supposed to similar, be similar to the uh, development on Camp Creek Village. And um, we, would, we would like this not to go any further without discussing it with us, because this direct, directly, um, directly involves us is that it's right at our back door so we we kind of want to get a hold on that and the other thing that i want to speak on was uh i'm i'm all for the pools in the six four and five but i just want to make sure that uh, we've been responsible with the budget because um you know we don't want to see a lot of change orders and change orders really should not be too far from the contract they they should be within reason and we know that a lot of these change orders keep coming and it sent us over budget, and we want to make sure that whoever's the PM on this on this development. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. And the last speaker is Mrs. Jermaine Lojet, um, but I'm sure she resides in Stone Mountain, Georgia. All right, um, Council. It is. Uh, I've been made aware. Miss Miss Jet is the mother of. Wendell Lowe Jr., um, one of the recent uh, bodies found in Camelot, it was her son. 
and she is asked to speak today. She's been advised that this item is not on the agenda, uh, but I have been asked to ask the council to allow this mother to speak to the audience. Ask we suspend the rules so she can speak. Second. I, oh, I was going to say I move that we suspend the rules so that she can speak. It's not. It's not. We have to suspend the rules and then we have to vote to allow her to speak. That's. So we, we have a motion in a second. Uh, I will uh, take a vote by a show of hands to suspend the rules. Record that as unanimous. Thank you. Ms. Jett, you have the floor. Hi, my name is Jermaine Lowe Jett. My son was killed in Camelot on September the 6th. I'm trying to find out why we haven't set, shut these condominiums or whatever they are, why they not, haven't been shut down. I don't understand. You have a coal enforcement, but when you ride into those apartments, they look like a third world country lives there. I don't understand. Why are you allowing these people to still live there? It's infested with rats, everything else, and it's every time I turn around, we're getting a young black male or a young black woman, female, and they're being killed. It's just like you don't care, you're looking over it, I'm just trying to find out. I know this has been going on for at least 15 years. And everybody keeps talking about, we're working on it, we're working on it. Tell me what you're working on. I'm speaking to you now, Mr. Reeves, since that's your district. What are you working on? What are you doing to fix these apartments or whatever they are, condominiums? I won't call them condominiums because they don't look like condominiums. They look like apartments. So if you, over that district, you're not doing anything for code enforcement? I don't understand. You have elderly people that's been staying out there all their lives, and they are prisoners in their own home. They have to go inside around 5 o'clock because they're scared and don't come out till the next morning. Our elderly people shouldn't live like this. So what are you doing to fix the property? It's a question, sir. Oh, no, I'm not allowed to respond right now. Okay. So I'm just trying, you're going to see my face, and you're going to continue to see my face until you tell me why these apartments are not shut down before we kill a, another black male is found dead over there. My son was shot 18 times. I don't understand that. I don't understand it, and there's nothing you can say to make me understand it, and I know I have stood here and went over my time, but I want someone to explain to me why these apartments are still active, why people are still living in these apartments. First, Ms. Jett, let me just say that we um, are sorry for your loss and our prayers are with you. And uh, if there is anyone else, we have suspended the rules. If there's anyone else who would like to take a point of personal privilege. The chair recognizes District 5 Councilman Corey Reeves. Um, true condolences to the loss of your child, which no parents should have to bear. There's nothing I can say to heal those wounds or anything of that nature. But I will be very clear on there was a whole plan in place for Camelot and it has been three and a half years in the making, and we have a resolve and a solution, as I just gave you my number, but I'm not gonna do it here on this DS, as because the things that we are doing is, it's unique in its nature, and the factions that go on in Camelot, but I will say this, and you can verify with our code enforcement and our law enforcement officers, as um, we have been active in cleaning up the area. And we had a meeting with the community, public safety officers, and all that are involved. And more so, we had a meeting last Monday with our economic development and spoke about this very deal on the revitalization of Highway 279 and the center point of that corridor, which is Camelot. And I will be more than happy to talk with you 
uh, offline and includes you in the conversations uh, that are we going forward. And so, as stated, we are doing exactly what needs to be done in a very legal, strategic manner. Facts. Chief is here. Police is here. You can verify with them. As, uh, but I assure you, it's not going uh, overlooked and unaddressed. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead, please. You can't assure me of anything. For three years, it doesn't take three years to do anything. Those apartments have been bad for over 15 years. And you say you, for the last three years, what are you trying to do, get a bigger payment? I don't understand. Make me understand what you trying to do, because right now, I don't understand. I just know it's a lot of killing in those apartments. You have elderly people held hostage in those apartments. And you're telling me you've been working on this for three years. What have you done? Because I don't see anything. Well, it's, as you it said. It is not funny. As it's you not. said, I'm not laughing at all. Okay. But as you stated, a 15-year problem and a three, it's not going to become, it's not going to do anything overnight. And a plan is not going to be effectuated overnight. However, as that, as stated, I will be more than happy to sit down with you and the powers that be and include you on letting you know what is going on. And as it can be verified by our chief, by our code enforcement, unfortunately our director just left. But however, as in the legal manner, it's a process. And all I'm saying is this, if you, as, if everybody here seen New Jack City, that's what it is, it is New it Jack is. City. It, it, it's it, just it. like the same apartment complex that they took over. And I still don't that. understand. You're what, still what? saying it takes time. What kind of time does it take for there. one of your family members to get killed in those apartments in order for you to do something? It's nothing you can say to make me understand. I'm trying, I'm trying. We all are trying. But it's ridiculous for the, these young men to keep getting killed in those apartments and y'all are not doing anything. All right. Um, I'll be happy thank you, to thank you, Ms. Jett, you. for your comments, and thank you, Councilman Reeves, for your response. Uh, this item is not on the agenda uh, for discussion um, tonight. Mr. Mayor, I'm requesting a point of per um, personal pri too. privilege right. as well. You allowed it for one. Oh. Uh, <laughs> And I think it's and, relevant. I think uh, it's relevant. But apparently we're going to discuss it now. Thank you for coming and forcing this discussion, Ms. Jett. So, uh, the chair recognizes District 7 Councilwoman Linda Pritchett. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, for recognizing me. Uh, Ma'am, um, what I'd like you to know is that last Monday I hosted an emergency town hall meeting to discuss this matter. Yes. At World Changers. At World Changers. But yes. you also said you wasn't going to shut the partners down. Well, here's the thing, and I want you to understand, I'm a legal person, I'm a, I'm a paralegal. And so we don't talk about apples and oranges, we talk about specifics. Those are condominiums, and you can't just shut it down. Now, you just can't, because if, we, if, you, if it was a subdivision with, how, with trap houses lined up, you just can't shut down the trap houses, because you just can't do it because people own them. So this is, this is what I want you to know. We had the town hall meeting at World Changers. We had several agencies that were there. The chief magistrate judge, we had um, the solicitor general's office with his chief investigator, prosecutors, and we had personnel from the sheriff's office. What the personnel from the sheriff's office informed us is that they are executing warrants every day. They actually arrested someone that same day executing a warrant against squatters, people that shouldn't be there. Now, I would like to let you know that I want to thank um, Madam Subedan and Chief Meadows for putting in place a plan of action where we have had 
this Friday, I believe between Thursday and Friday started the most aggressive heavy crime reduction program on Old National that I have seen in a long time. I have seen, I have gotten calls from business owners to say, we see cars being like five and six cars pulled over in one time, roadblocks, road checks, a aggressive sweep. And what I believe, I can't speak for them, but as someone with a criminal justice degree and someone in the legal profession, it has been something that has significantly deterred crime. A slang term for that is when the block is hot, the folks just, they stay where they at, they don't come out. And so this aggressive move, I believe, is d addressing this issue. It's because we're trying to address this issue. And there are other things that are happening. Um, th there are things happening, it's just that People don't understand it because it's not, happening, it's not happening in a fashion which just shuts it down completely. You've talked about the code enforcement component. They have cited many owners. There are many violations. Unfortunately, the state law also does not cooperate with us in where you may have a unit that is uninhabitable from our perspective, but Georgia law does not address, address what is uninhabitable. As long as you got a roof, you got doors, you got windows, it's a structure. They, according to Georgia law, it's inhabitable. So there's a lot of work that still needs to be done, but if you go on Old National, you will see what I'm talking about. I saw it today just grabbing lunch, and I saw four sheriff deputy vehicles, and they came in some kind of formation, and I saw one of our officers that had pulled somebody over, and this is in the parking lot um, over by the Goodwill. And I just haven't seen something that looked that aggressive, and it actually almost made me uncomfortable, and I don't even have a problem, but when you see a lot of police in an area, to me, it seemed like they're looking for something, or they're finding something, I'm getting out the way, and criminals do not like to be around police. So I assure you, I can only give you my word that we are working really hard on that issue, and we're going to continue to work real hard. You know, I, I give you my condolences on the tragedy of your son's death. I've lost someone very recently to gun violence, and it's an issue that goes on all over the city. I know it's concentrated in Camelot, but I assure you, we're working super duper hard, and if you take the time to speak to Chief Meadows, who is here, um, he can assure you and maybe share things that I can't. But I appreciate you coming here and, and talking about this. We really do care. We care a whole lot, and, and I yield. All right, uh, the chair recognizes Mayor Pro Tem Williams-Brown. Thank you, Mayor. Um, uh, Mayor, if I may, um, I know that we all feel very deeply the pain of this mother, as well as all of the other people who have um, lost their lives in Camelot. Um, however, I think that it would be prudent for us to reconsider continuing this conversation in this vein, um, given that we do have pol ongoing police activity, we have open code enforcement cases, and um, I would caution, Mayor, that we be very mindful that everything we say and everything we do, we're putting on camera to become evidence in a court of law. Um, and so I would just ask Mayor that if we could move the move on to the next um, public comment, or if there are no more, if we could please move the agenda um, before we uh, say something that will be played in court to our detriment. Thank you. 
Thank you, uh, Mayor Pro Tem. I agree. I did try to move us on. Um, it will be the pleasure of this council. Um, can we move on? And we did suspend the rules. Okay. Well, the chair recognizes District 3 Councilwoman Helen Willis. Ma'am, I just want to give you some words of encouragement. I am um, so sorry that you lost your son to the act of violence. When I got elected in 2017, I had a high crime community in my district, and it was called Hickory Park, known now as Freedom Park. And we had over 100 crime incidents a year, and I have the data to prove it. Now we're at maybe five violent incidents. And we did not shut them down, but it did. we did take a comprehensive approach, and it did take about three years to get us where we are now. Um, and we did work with Chief Meadows, several law enforcement partners, code enforcement, and it also took the property manager to work with us too, to uh, install a sophisticated camera system into the property manager's office. We also went in and provided supportive services to the families and the children, and I still go into the apartment complexes to this day. Cylon Church International is a great partner um, and they tutor kids three times a week and provide food insecurity. Comcast put a lift zone over there. They put $300,000 in IT infrastructure and they also donated 30 computers. I say all of that to say arresting our way out of trouble is not the only answer. We're going to have to take a comprehensive approach. That's part of it. But we have a lot of children and we have a lot of seniors over there. And we are going to have to take a comprehensive approach um, to solve the problem. And what complicates Camelot is that these are individually owned apartment units and Georgia favors property owners rights. And so I cannot go into all of the efforts that are going into resolving the crime issues, but I can assure you that there are some efforts going on that cannot be divulged. Um, but I just want you to know that there are children, there are seniors over there, and we got to think about, and it's, 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 as many people say we need to shut them down, there's also, I have a lot of emails of seniors saying they don't want to be shut down because that's their home, and they don't want to be displaced, and I can show you those emails. You can do a pub, you can do an open record request, and I can share those emails to you. So it's very complicated, but I can assure you that what's going on now does not have to continue to go on because in my district, my high, my high crime community, where I was having 100 violent crime issues a year, and we're only down to five now. Thank you. The chair recognizes District 5 Councilman Corey Reeves. Thank you so much, and I'm just gonna say Thank you to our officers, our code enforcement professionals, and our fire officials, and to the staff at the city who's been working diligently uh, with this administration on the resolve as comprehensively we've been headed down the right path. As I said, it takes time. Thank you, Chief, for your efforts. And it's all part of the crime reduction and so uh, as just open records of correction and ask for the facts on what has been done, we cannot bring nothing back. We cannot say anything further than what we can say. But I'm just going to say. I'm sorry, Ms. Jack, we can't, I can't staff. allow you to respond. Uh, you, you've spoken. Council has responded. We do have to move. something about the property. No, no, I wasn't speaking directly specifically to you, ma'am. I'm, I'm sorry about that if you took it that manner. I do apologize. But I just thank you to our staff who has been working diligently to eradicate and doing something about this situation. All right. Uh, thank you, everyone. Um, this is the most public conversation we have ever had about Camelot. 
um, not for a lack of trying, but thank you, uh, Miss Jet, for coming and uh, telling us about your son. And thank you, everyone, for all that you're doing. I understand that Miss Jewel Johnson has returned uh, to give us the final public comment of the evening. If you will approach the mic. I'm so touched. And I'm sorry that um, one of our citizens have got experienced what they have experienced. <coughs> and it touched me very dearly to my heart because I have two, I have three sons. And thank God that they are still with me today. But I wanted to speak on, please forgive me because I'm still real touched on all these zoning cases in our city. And I know for a fact that we have some issues to deal with as it relates to that. Because many of times, not only me, but many other residents have asked several times that we amend our planning and zoning. And I'm asking this council mayor, and the city manager to please let's take a look at amending that with the people. We cannot move further without the people's input. This has been going on too long, and I know a lot of you don't agree with me, and that's okay. It's okay to disagree and understand the disagreement between civilized adults. And that's the reason I'm coming before you right now. You, you don't have to take Jewel Johnson or any of these citizens home with you when you go home. We only request that you do your fiduciary responsibility. And we are supposed to have a part of that. And we have been constantly asking for that. And you have constantly ignored ignored everything that we have asked along those lines. That's one of the reasons I wanted to bring that up because we have serious issues as it relates to our planning and zoning. And you know that I know what I'm talking about. Thank you. All right, thank you all for your comments. Uh, we have now reached uh, council comments and we are back on schedule. So I'll start this time with District One, Councilwoman Dr. Rao. Thank you, um, thank you to all the citizens who came out. I wanna give a couple quick updates. On October 4th at the Southwest Art Center, I have a community conversation with Greystone Power to address um, reliability issues. I want to encourage you to come out at six o'clock. You can register uh, via Eventbrite and um, as long as you're serviced by Greystone Power, we want you to participate. In addition, on October 14th, in partnership with Councilwoman uh, Pritchett, we will have a veterans um, brunch at the Tennis Center. Um, and um, any of our veterans, we want to encourage you to reach out to either of us. There is a Google registration form that you can find on any of our social media platforms or the cities to register for that event. We are, we're planning a grand time for our veterans, so uh, we encourage you to participate. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I'll go Mayor Pro Tem. <laughs> I apologize. I did not realize he left the room. <laughs> Councilwoman Gums. All right. Um, thank you for recognizing me. I want to let uh, residents know that uh, that are in District Two that we are listening to you. Um, we are asking that you all hold in a little bit longer, but we have some exciting things that uh, we want to share. Um, we know that, as you all know, I love seniors. 
um, in District 2. And on September the 28th, we will be having, at 10 o'clock, um, we will be having our Senior Health Day with the South Fulton uh, Police and Fire Department. It's called um, Brunch and Badge. Uh, which I thought was kind of cute. Um, but we will be talking about um, fun activities. We'll learn more about city resources. Um, it's similar to Coffee with a Cop, but we just changed it up just so you all won't be thinking you're going to have coffee. We'll feed you pancakes and waffles. Um, but we are asking that you come out. And then after we finish, you'll exercise and have a good time. So we are asking you to come out on uh, the 28th, which I believe is this coming Thursday. Um, also, too, on October the 13th, we'll be having, uh, also, wait, let me, before I go to that one, also on uh, that evening, we'll be having an event at the Southwest Art Center, um, is District 2 Clean City Conversations, it's the town hall where we'll have uh, code enforcement, public works, um, an array of people to discuss our uh, little concerns and um, illegal dumping and letting you know what the city is doing uh, to correct that measure and the opportunities that we have for the upcoming budget year. So that meeting will be a virtual town hall that will also be recorded and live stream on the city's uh, YouTube page. So if you cannot make it, we'll definitely um, make sure that you all have access to the recordings. And that is at 5.30 uh, p.m that evening on September the 28th. Also on October the 13th, again, um, we are rocking with some seniors. Um, Councilwoman Willis will tell you a little bit more about the senior brunch that will be held at Welcome All Park. Um, this is a partnership that I think she, uh, we will have some great things happening. And lastly, um, we are working to try to uh, get another bulk free and um, Recycling day at Merck Miles transfer. We're just working out and free paper sh shredding. So we are right now trying to uh, work out some details with that, but that will happen uh, towards the end of the month. So again, please stay tuned to what's happening in District 2. Thank you all for your emails, your encouragement of support. We got a lot going on in the city of South Fulton. If you need more information, please feel free to follow my social media handles and then also go to my website at carmelitagums.com. Uh, thank you, and that's all I have. Thank you, District 3, Councilwoman Helen Willis. District 2. Thank you for recognizing me. Um, I want to um, extend condolences to um, the Pastor Earl Wade Calloway Sr. family. He was the senior pastor of um, St. Stephen's Missionary Baptist Church. Um, it is in East Point, but he has been... Um, a pillar in the South Fulton region um, for over 31 years. Um, he transitioned um, this previous, um, he transitioned on yesterday. And so um, let's send all the love to the Pastor Earl Calloway Sr. family. Um, on a brighter note, I want to send a congratulations out to Reverend William Freeman, senior former senior senior pastor of the First Red Oak Baptist Church on Washington Road. He retired um, last Sunday with 32 years of service uh, to the uh, to uh, First Red Oak Historic Baptist Church, and I was able to honor him with the City of South Fulton proclamation. Um, uh, I want to tell him thank you for his service, and he will still be around. He's a District Three resident. And um, I just, I spoke with him today and I hope he enjoys retirement. He has children and grandchildren um, that he would uh, continue to uh, uh, spend his time with in retirement. Uh, District 3 is welcoming this Saturday, the fifth annual Yeet Dance Festival at Welcome All Park. Um, please come out, bring your family. Um, it is, uh, we are, Honoring some um, some uh, some of the famous DJs, uh, uh, recognizing them for 50 years of hip hop. So please come out. It's always a fun family time. It's the Yeek Dance Festival here at Welcome All Park this Saturday, and it starts at noon. Uh, again, Councilmember Gums mentioned the Senior Sip and Safety. We are having this Sip and Safety brunch because I have encountered a lot of seniors who didn't know anything about registering their alarms, didn't know anything about the uh, the uh, safety, um, 
measures that we have in place to register their their cameras they don't know that we have uh, safety components to um, add to their vehicles if they have Hondas or what's the other uh, Kia. Kias and so um, I, a lot of our seniors are not on email a lot of our seniors are not um, on social media and so we are asking them to come out so we can give them some safety tips and we will have our public safety personnel our fire department will be there to also educate them about fire safety and um, the fire checks and the installation of um, the the fire alarms that they do. We also want to graduate, congratulate Tyrone Spears. Um, he hosted a golf tournament yesterday that Councilmember Gums, Councilmember Rowley and I attended and we honored him, the Tyrone Spears and Jardine Foundation. Um, it, it was in um, a fundraiser to help uh, support autism and we were able to give him a proclamation um, he does a lot of good work through the foundation supporting the cause of autism um, so kudos to Tyrone Spears um, it was a great turnout and um, we had people from all over the region that attended I want to remind everybody about the on October 14th the uh, Red Oak Historic District Arts Festival um, this has blossomed into a beautiful event. It will be um, on October 14th, Saturday, on Roosevelt Highway. They are still accepting applications for vendors. It will be from 12 until 6 p.m. Um, I want to thank the Red Oak Historic District Board. They have worked tirelessly over the years to help spur economic, de uh, spur economic development in the area, bring attention to a lot of the businesses in the area. And this year, we have over um, 30 vendors that will be participating. We will have vendors, music, theater, art, live music. It's always a great time. So come out October 14th from 12 to 6 p.m. And if you would like to be a vendor, um, please reach out to my office so I can get you connected with Caitlin. Um, Caitlin is the manager of the Red Oak uh, Main Street program, and she's doing an amazing job uh, sparing economic development in the Red Oak District. If you're not receiving my newsletters, please uh, reach out to me. Um, you can uh, subscribe to my newsletters by texting District 3 uh, at 428-428-4228. Or you can simply email me at helen.willis at cityofsouthfultongga.gov. Or you can call me at 404-803-4219. Or you can uh, simply um, inbox me or reach out to me on Facebook or reach out to my legislative specialist, um, Shannon Parham. And we'll be happy to get you um, registered to receive newsletters that go out bi-weekly electronically. Thank you so much and thank you for engaging and thank you for coming out for all those who have attended in person and those who are attending virtually. All right, District 4, Council Sebastian. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, first of all, I would just like to express condolences. I see um, this mom had, has left for the loss of her son in Camelot. I know I've already um, offered my support in whatever way he needs it to council member Reeves. And so I think everyone here is concerned about what is happening there at Camelot and we're not taking it lightly. Um, I wanna thank everyone who came out for uh, District 4 Fall Festival this past Saturday. It was an awesome event. Thank you staff for the work that you did in making this happen. I think it's the biggest one that we have had so far. I think that event is, is started even before I was council member. Um, but in the two years I've been here, this year has been um, even um, bigger than before and I look forward to continuing to work with this and build community through this effort. And thank you for those that came out um, Oh, clerk, council member, Royal, thank you guys for coming all the way out to the country um, <laughs> to be with us at Wilkinson Mill Park. And um, also, too, I'm going to call him out, our parks director, 
as well for the work that you and your team did um, in making that event possible. Um, I, am, I also want to express condolences to the family of Sir Jose Bright, a District 4 resident who I was made aware a few days ago who um, passed away recently. I just want to express my condolences to him and, and the friends who might be um, even listening in this moment. Um, I am a, I'm a little bit frustrated, to be quite honest. I have gotten several emails, and I have been um, in contact. It's been around this issue of lands being disturbed for subdivisions in District 4 and other development. And I just want to let the public who are listening know, and even those that are here, that as they always say, zoning follows the land. And council members do not get involved in development unless something goes through the planning and zoning process and we have to do a zoning change. We don't know the landowners, they have all right to work with their zoning and do the development as um, they want to do it once they have the zoning. And it's up to our staff and the monitoring process to see to it that they're doing what they need to do according to our laws. Um, I, I, I too am frustrated because I, I, would, I would dare guess that, um, Mr. Mayor, if you allow me, because this is very important, I would dare guess that District 4 is probably the district in the city that has most of these pre-approved development and subdivisions on the Fulton County. And that is just because we've had, we have so much vacant lands. I can tell you right now, there's probably four developments that are going on that even I as a council member did not know that these were happening until I go and trees are being cleared or someone called me and said, hey, why are they cutting down the trees on Hall Road? And I'm like, well, I don't know, right? Should I know? I would love to know because I would, I've already asked staff if we could look at a process in which although we're not involved with the zoning, if we as council members could at least, once an application comes through, to be given a heads up that something is happening because I would love to have a conversation with these developers to say, to have you spoken to the community. It would be nice if you want to partner with our community to go back, even though you have the zoning, to go back and have some conversation with the zoning because some of these zonings are 20 years old. And what they plan to build 20 years old surely shouldn't be the same thing that they're going to be building today. So at least if you have a conversation with the community and have some sense of what the current needs are, you're truly building a partnership. But again, if I don't know, I don't know. I have to investigate when the trees are being cleared. And by that time, honestly, it's probably too late. So it's not about stopping development. It's about making sure that our communities get quality development, regardless of when the zoning was done. right? And I hope, as a city, we find a way to address this. Because yes, that plat for Hampton Oaks showed up on the agenda. I looked at it and saw it like everybody else, when the agenda was published. I had no conversation with staff about this, and I looked at it, I know exactly where it was, right? And I would love to find out, well, what type of, what type of um, buildings are they putting there, right? What's gonna be the, the plan for public safety around these, these um, denser developments, right? All these are questions that, to me, we owe the public as a city. So I'm challenging us to look at that process and to see if we can do better. Thank you. Thank you. The chair recognizes District 5 Councilwoman Corey Rees. Thank you, um, Mayor. As <clears throat> heart, pride, and determination, three words that mean a lot to me, uh, shape me actually as your heart got to be in whatever you're doing, you have to have pride in it, and you have to be determined to make a difference. As just when you think the process isn't working, they say believe in the process, trust the process. That's all we can do. And we have staff 
who are innovative, creative, determined to make a difference, and want to make a difference. And I champion that. And uh, we have great leadership. And it's something to say that when you have accomplish a lot but still have so far to go as the new city thing that's the, the new car smells worn off so we six years old we'll be seven next year and seven being the number of completion and I tell you I have been quite lenient about opinions as the facts <laughs> Oh, this is a great city, y'all. And it's our city. And we determined the outcome. That's why we became a city. And so with seven districts, true, but I'm five sevens of the city. And so I think of us as a whole. And the future is bright. And I'm just saying that Sometimes you have to get out your own way. But everything is a process. Before a house became a house, those first trees. So it's a process to get there. And believe in the process. As good Lord works in mysterious ways. But things that seem inadequate or from the eye point of view. Just know the staff that we have and the resources allocated to it is diligently working toward achieving the goal. As y'all see the outline in the budget we just approved tonight. And I believe that roadmap to success is going to materialize and it's going to get us there. As we have a captain, co-captain, get this, and you have a team Together, everyone achieves more. And I firmly believe in that, and I'm going to stand behind it. As I don't have to scream a lot of things, but just know that impact is being made. And I'm proud of that. And from the team you have up here, but to the most important component of this city is the constituents. And... Uh, we're here for you, always. And um, shout out to my council member, JC, for spearheading the world's largest autism sensory fest. And because it's the fifth anniversary of the Yeek Fest, I just might be out there Saturday, yeeking it up, okay? And so, as um, <laughs> just pray for this city. Don't pray on this city. P-R-A-Y for the city. Don't P-R-E-Y. As um, it's open season, y'all. We all know this. But I'm going to stand by the facts <laughs> and the impact that has been made. And I appreciate everyone who has made it possible as history has been made and will continue to be made because we are a city of first. Remember that. And thank you to all the staff. And I just appreciate you. And I love you. And you can't do nothing about it. Thank you, Councilman Reeves. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Williams Brown. Thank, thank you, Mayor. Um, I normally don't have much to say in, during comments because I've always, I was taught and have always believed that your actions should speak louder than your words. And that the people who are most effective 
at their jobs are those who are doing their jobs and not talking about doing their jobs. So I say very little. However, I am a little distressed this evening because we sit here meeting after meeting and we say a lot, we say a lot, the public says a lot, lots of talking goes on. And in the midst of that talking, there seems to be lots of animosity, lots of dislike, lots of distrust, lots of accusations thrown about. And those things are put out in the atmosphere, but they're never followed up on in a way that is meaningful. Answers to questions and solutions to problems cannot be promulgated in the midst of a meeting where we were called together to move the business of the city forward. And it is clear to me that there need to be some meaningful conversations that cannot happen in this forum because that is not why we are assembled here. And so I would like to see, as I run out of seconds, I would like to see us take some time and take some steps back to understand what is everybody mad about? Why is everybody rolling their eyes, snapping their necks, grabbing, grabbing papers, and just in general behaving as though this is not a professional setting where professionals are assembled to conduct business. And I hope that we can get to the point where instead of launching attacks and hurling accusations that we can sit down and try to understand what is everybody so mad about? Particularly given that we have been charged, if you are truly the Christian you profess to be, to live peaceably among all men. Your time and your energy on this earth are limited. Don't waste them on things that are beyond your control. I yield. Thank you, District 7, Councilwoman Pritchett. Thank you again. Um, I just would like to remind um, the residents that lately, if you start seeing debris in the roads, trees, limbs, things like that, I've received lots of your emails and phone calls and text messages, but please utilize C Click Fix. It helps us to document what's out there in the road. It allows us to also make sure that the right personnel um, attends to those things. So see, click, fix. Please download the app. It's very useful for those things, potholes, um, trash, 
illegal dumping, all those type of things that many of you, I welcome your emails so that I can follow up, but I would love for your emails to include your seat, click, fix, ticket number so that I can follow up on that. And um, with that said, I will yield. Thank you. All right, Mr. Clerk, if you would bring up that PowerPoint, thanks so much. Um, While our clerk is bringing that up, I will just uh, reiterate all of uh, the comments that have been spoken um, previously about uh, Camelot and our concern for the families there and the families throughout our city. Uh, I think we will be rolling out some initiatives and some policies that will um, hopefully make um, our our renters and our homeowners safer and uh hold uh landlords accountable but this week our sanitation bills are due um, they are due on the 30th you can pay online or you can visit these uh local offices at greenbrier mall um or stonewall tell if you have questions you can always call our 311 number 470 Five five two four three one one. Next slide. Uh, playing now. You heard me talk about this earlier at uh, the Southwest Art Center. Is that serious He-Man ball? Uh, the True Colors Theater Company is celebrating their 20th anniversary, and for 14 of those 20 years, they have been housed at our own Southwest Art Center. Uh, we are proud to support the arts here. You can go to the next slide. It is incredible play. Uh, happens to be. The entire cast happens to be from the city of South Fulton. These are all guys that I went to high school with. So come out and see some incredible homegrown actors. We'll go to the next slide. Last week, uh, myself and several council members attended the 52nd annual legislative session of the Congressional Black Caucus. Uh, we met a lot of luminaries. You see me here with uh, Barbara Lee, a congresswoman who I've quoted before. And next slide, uh, Jumani Williams, who is actually the city of New York's public advocate. Uh, he worked very closely, his office worked very closely with ours uh, in the setting up of our public advocate's office. And we thank him for that and go to the next slide. But of all the important people that I met um, in Washington, DC, uh, the most important people for me or the most impressive people for me were the political science students of uh, Dr. Ravi Perry's uh, political science class at Howard University. Go to the next slide, you can see me talking. The next generation of leaders are here and uh, we're gonna be talking more about educating our young people in political science and bringing more young people into City Hall with our paid intern program, if you'll go back for me. Um, uh, yeah, go to the next slide, I'm sorry, thank you. Uh, this. Uh, October, we are bringing back Courageous Conversations. If you did, if you weren't able to make it into the last town hall, it is a an event not to be missed. It will be Friday, 1020 at the Southwest Art Center. Um, you can find out more information. I'm gonna tell you how if you go to the next slide. Uh, you don't have to wait until uh, October 20th to have a Courageous Conversation with me. You can come and talk about anything that you want. Uh, you can get 20 minutes with the mayor every Monday for Mayor Mondays. Uh, you can call and make an appointment, uh, you, or you can just walk in. We take walk-ins all day uh, on Mondays, so please come out. And you can find all of this information and more by texting the word Fulton, F-U-L-T-O-N, to 33777. That is 33777. If you text the word Fulton, it will sign you up for my newsletter and text alerts. Uh, thank you all for being here tonight. We're going to continue with the meeting, South Fulton, forever. Mr. Clerk, please sound the next item. Mr. Mr. Mayor, that brings us to item 25 on the agenda under calendar and administration. 
This is the second read and request for approval of an ordinance to amend Title I Administration Chapter 3, Mayor and Council of the City of South Fulton Code of Ordinances for the purpose of amending Section 1-3001, time, place for meetings and zoning hearings and open meetings. This is uh, placed on the agenda by the City Manager. All right, Madam City Manager. Thank you, Mayor. This will allow us to have two regular meetings a month. The first meeting will have a workshop and a work, work session and staff will bring presentations. The second will be um, council and invited guest presentations. Of course, we will spread them out. Um, and each of those meetings will allow for us to get regular items approved and we will have a consent agenda. All right, thank you. Uh, nature is made up of circles, and after many tessellations of council meetings, we are returning to our original format, second and fourth Tuesdays with a work session followed by a council meeting. Uh, there will be a slight adjustment. Uh, please correct me if I'm wrong. We're going to hear the zoning cases on the first Tuesday, and we're going to do the proclamations on the fourth Tuesday. Uh, to try and even things out and keep yeah. keep the meeting under five hours. Uh, and with that, the chair will entertain a motion. I make a motion to approve uh, an ordinance to amend Title I, Chapter 3, Mayor and Council of the City of South Fulton Code of Ordinance for the purpose of amending Section 1-3001, time, place for meetings and zoning hearings, open meetings. Second. All right, it's been properly moved and seconded. Uh, any discussion? Seeing and hearing none, I uh, will call for the vote by a show of hands. Record that as unanimous, approved. All right, please sound the next item. That brings us to item 26. Request for approval to confirm a special event for Camp Creek Church of Christ 5K walk slash run scheduled for September 30th, 2023 from 9 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. And it starts and ends at the church driveway located at 2400 Merck Road, South Houghton, Georgia, 30311. This is located in District 2, CDRA. I moved. Up. Wait, wait, hold on. I'm, I'm going to did CDRA... You were called, all right. Uh, the chair recognizes Councilwoman Gums, District 2. So I'd like to make a motion to approve uh, item number 26, approval for a special event for Camp Creek Church of Christ, 5K walk and run for September the 30th. I would also like to move to approve item number 27, which is the second read for request for approval of an ordinance to amend Title Eight traffic and vehicles of the City of South Fulton Code of Ordinance. And also I would like to um, approve item number 29, which is the second read and request for approval of ordinance to amend title 13, fire protection and prevention for chapter three, fire prevention code and safety standards of the code of ordinance for the city of South Fulton. It's been properly moved and seconded. Any discussion on items 26, 28, or 27? 27 or 29. All right, seeing and hearing none, I will call for a vote by a show of hands. I record that as unanimous, approved. All right, please sound the next unsounded item. Um, wait, we're, we're, we're gonna sound the item yeah, first. That, that actually brings us item 31. Uh, no, under I think we were on item 28. Eight. I'm sorry, yeah, 26, that, 27, yeah, 29. Item 28 is a first read. It's an ordinance to amend section six Dash 2002, Definition Chapter 2, Solid Waste Ordinance, Title 6, Health and Administration by reinstituting the 2005 Fulton Solid Waste Management Plan and for other lawful purposes, sponsored by Council Members Ryle and Public Works. First read. All right, the chair recognizes uh, District 1 Council Member Ryle. Just to provide clarity, um, there was some omission, so let's just make sure that um, our Public Works or solid waste ordinance and plan is in place, so. All right, uh, uh, this is just a comment. I'm sure that we'll have discussion, um, but Merck Miles is included in this solid waste plan. I just wanna make yeah. sure that um, 
I will say previously we, we approved a comprehensive plan and then found ourselves locked into that plan before we really understood that. So uh, let's just take these two weeks and make sure that we um, you know, understand all the ramifications of approving all the details of this plan. Yeah, we've been working on that extensively to make sure we've covered our bases. That's why it's in conjunction with Public Works. All right. Uh, seeing and hearing no further discussion, Mr. Clerk, please sound the, the next item. I think we're at 30. Yeah, item 30, first read of an ordinance to amend Title VI, Health and Sanitation, Chapter 1, Smoke Free Air of the City of South Fulton Code of Ordinances, so as to provide an exemption from the smoking regulations identified in Section 6 1005 through 6 1008 for one cigar bar located at 3461 Roosevelt Highway, Suite 15, and for the lawful purposes, sponsored by Councilmember Willis. First read. So just to provide a, provide a little clarity, this is not amending the smoke-free ordinance. This is for, to provide ex an exemption to the single business due to a lot of the inaccuracies and, and uh, errors that occurred when this business opened. Um, I mean, I don't want to go into all of it, but I will tell you that this business should have never been granted a business license because there was a moratorium and um, there was an oversight by staff that granted the business license. Um, there are several oversights in this business. This business had uh, invested over $500,000 of investment into this business. And so after consulting with our city attorney, we did not want to amend the smoke free ordinance um, that passed unanimously, but we also don't want to be punitive to a business that um, had a lot of oversight and was not informed about a lot of things that should not have occurred. And so it was uh, expressed that it was just best to exempt this business to allow them to continue to operate as is without amending the ordinance. This is the first read. We will be voting uh, next city council meeting. Thank you, but this is not an amendment to the ordinance. The order, ordinance remains. This is an exemption to the, for this business. Thank you. All right, seeing and hearing no further comment, Mr. Clerk, please sound the next item. That brings us to item 31, under purchasing and future expenditures, parks and recreation. Request for approval of a resolution approving the interim city manager's recommendations for the renovation of Welcome All Park Pool and the consideration of outdoor pools in the city and for other purposes. 1.5 million for Welcome All, including contingency, and 3.5 million for two new outdoor pools, including contingency, at Burdett and Cedar, Park, Cedar Grove Park. This is sponsored by Council Members Willis, Williams Brown, Gums, and Sebastian. Um, I move that we. Oh, I'm sorry. We'll entertain a motion. I move that we approve this measure. Um, request for approval of resolution approving the interim city manager recommendations for the renovation of Welcome All Park pool and for the consideration of outdoor pools in the city for other purposes. Um, uh, specifically Burdett and Cedar Grove Park. I also move that we approve and request the approval to award the contract for uh, ITB Tremacro Tennis Court Rebuild. Uh, I also move that we approve the road and bridges. F request approval to award the contract of Cochrane Road over Deep Creek. Uh, for 3.895677.40 million dollars. I also move that we request approval to award the contract uh, T Splas Road Resurfacing Project for 21.726739.66 million dollars. I also move that we approve and request approval for uh, a novation agreement between Williams, Russell, and Johnson Incorporated, uh, Atlas Technical Consultants LLC Limited Liability Company, the City of South Fulton, Georgia Municipal Corporation. And lastly, I also move that we approve 
request for approval to allow Atlas Technical Consultants LLC to partner and complete the design of the T260 National Highway Sidewalk Phase 2 as the engineering record in the amount of uh, $150,000. Discussion. Okay, uh, it has been moved and seconded to approve items 31 through 37. Uh, the queue is open. Um, I hear there is discussion. I will begin with District 5, Councilman Reeves. Thank you so much, uh, Mayor. Um, I want to go back to 31. And so when it says, and for consideration of outdoor pools in the city, uh, is that going to be a design build? And, and, do, and, go ahead. and do we have a timeline for that? Is uh, a potential start date? And the um, specs are being reviewed by the um, senior procurement analyst, David Bryant, and, um, and the parks director. So our intention is as soon as we get a green light to go out to bid. Um, we are estimating based on recent pools that have been complete, and um, it will be pool, bathhouses, splash pad, and side prep. Can you repeat that just for? Sure, pools, bathhouses, splash pad, and site preparation. All right, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. And on the... Um, Signature tennis courts for Tremble Crow. Um, and as part of the going on is the resurfacing of the Burdett Tennis Center uh, consideration and has that been looked at? I can't say where we are with that. I have to circle back with the parks director to see where that is in the queue. Thank you so much. And the resurfacing project Chief Spots Road resurfacing project. Now, is this the resurfacing, and do we have a list of the streets that's going to be resurfaced? Yes, it's attached to your agenda. It's attached to the agenda, correct. So, is the resurfacing of Stacks Road in this? Because I know that we approved a grant of $2 million specifically for that. And is that going to be executed by the same contractor? I'd have to circle back with you and double check on that. Okay. Thank you. That's all. The chair recognizes District 4, Councilman Sebastian. Just have a quick question on item 33. Um, Madam City Manager, just what's the source of funding for that $3.9 million? 33, I believe we identified that as a T's Plus project. Okay. That's it, Mr. May. Thank you, you. All right. Um, I would like to ask a question first about uh, item 37, the uh, old national sidewalk phase. Uh, I feel that this has been on the agenda before to complete the design. We've been paying for this design for as long as I've been on this council. What what is what is happening now new here that has not happened before? So these two, 36 and 37, are cleanup items for us to be able to pay the vendor. Um, I believe what occurred is part there was a partnership. There was a name change, somebody died in the process. The business, um, the work of the business was done by one group. Now we're unable to pay them because they don't have a contract with us. So both 36 and 37 have been worked on by the attorneys and by staff to get us to a place where we can um, complete this and, and pay the bill. Am I missing anything, Vincent? Okay. Um, I'm 
I'm going to quote uh, the irreplaceable Dr. Mark Baker um, as I talk about uh, number 31, uh, these pools. Madam Senior Manager, I'm uncomfortable. We just heard this presentation two weeks ago and we're spending millions of dollars. I'm not clear where these outdoor pools are going. I just, I mean, you're, I, you have been more than capable in your execution of everything up to this point, but I am just also looking at an agenda after agenda after agenda with cleanup items around procurement uh, and I just don't think it's ready. And I believe that we are going to see this on an agenda again because it's not ready. Uh, that's, that's how I feel and I just, uh, I wanna put those comments on the record. I think that we, um, some, some, things, some things seem to move at a glacial pace in our city and some things seem to move faster than the speed of sound. And it, it concerns me. Well, you will see these again. This is your approval to move forward. This is not a procurement. When we come back with the procurement, um, we will have a side plan. You'll get more comfort, possibly, around it. Um, but building approval really isn't rocket science. So, I think it's needed. I think we know it's needed. The community has spoken. The professional staff know it's needed. In a pool, in a city of 108,000 people, one pool is one public pool is just not realistic. I hear you, All Mayor. Right. I have uh, discussion. The chair recognizes District Three Councilwoman Willis. And so I would like to go on the record to say that our city manager has done her due diligence. Um, before we had a very detailed and thorough presentation at the last council meeting, um, she specifically pulled in a room for me, the district representative, who has had a welcome all pool closed for about three years now, two because two years because of the pandemic. But now, you know, there is we t we have to totally rebuild that pool, and our colleagues uh, agreed in majority that it makes no sense to continue to do patchwork on that pool um, that is over 20 years old that we inherited from the county in this repair and so she brought all of the subject matter experts in the room to explain to me all of the options we also had a town hall meeting um, with several community members that was well attended and it was also uh, videotaped and shared um in the newsletter so um i am and uh, and we have four co-sponsors on here we're very comfortable with where we are um and i appreciate mrs uh subadan for picking up the ball and running and getting the subject matter experts in because this pool was not properly assessed and we were not given the proper information we were told it was just a roof problem and then we kept having to get change orders to fix the roof. We weren't told that the pumping system and the air conditioning system and the pool was leaking. We weren't told any of that. It took Ms. Subedan to come here, bring the subject matter experts into the room and explain where we were, where we need to go and what our options. And I totally trust what she is recommending. And I totally agree that in a city with over 108,000 residents, we should have 108, 108,000 residents. We should not have only one pool. So I want to go on record to say that, and I move the previous question. Second. All right, we'll take a vote by a show of hands for the previous question. Let's record that as unanimous. All right, and we'll take a vote by a, a, I'm sorry, we'll do a roll call vote for this, uh, for these items 31 through 37. 
So that brings us back to the main motion. A uh, motion by Councilmember Willis, seconded by Councilmember Rao to approve items 31, 32, 33, 35, 36, and 37. Roll call vote. Councilmember Rao? Yes. Councilmember Gums? Yes. Councilmember Willis? Yes. Councilmember Sebastian? Yes. Councilmember Reeves? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Williams Brown? Yes. Councilmember Pritchett? Those items were approved unanimously. All right, please sound the next item. That brings us to item 38. This is a request approval to award a contract for ITB 23-17 for standby storm line cleaning. The contract is awarded to SCA of, of CA LLC and the award amount is $80,500. I, I, I move I, to. The chair will entertain a motion. Okay. Um, I request approval for items number 38, request approval to award the contract for ITB uh, number 23 17, standby storm line cleaning. Also, too, I'd like to uh, request approval for item 39, which is a request for approval to modify and renew the existing professional services agreement for Brightview Landscaping in the amount of one million, what, is that one million, one, 18, one million thousand. plus. Yes. 18,000, 18, yeah, that. $641.36, and cents. yes. <laughs> Let's not forget the 36 cents. And then also, too, I want to um, request approval for item number 40, which is a request approval to enter into an agreement with per Perignani Construction to provide interior facility renovation for fire station number six, Cedar Grove. Um, the agreement is a piggyback off the cooperative agreement with the state of Georgia. Uh, also, too, I would like to request approval for item number 41 as well. Request, request approval for the contract for ITB number 23-76 Real-Time Prime Center Digital Platform Project IBM dash and in amount of 753,132. Second. Second. It's been properly moved and seconded. The chair recognizes Councilwoman, I mean Councilman Reeves. Thanks so much. Um, Mr. Mayor, for recognizing me as on item 38. And I just want to know, uh, Madam Superintendent, from the standpoint of the Director of Public Works, is there's a specific location on Old Bill Cook dealing with Mr. Minifield that's been an issue for the past two and a half, three years. And we've talked about this and discussed. And please tell me that this is. Uh, can be done under this contract for this amount? I would need to get the specifics, and I'm not prepared to bring up the Public Works Director right now. So um, he's aware of it. I can circle back with you. And on Stacks Road, we expect it to be on the November. Like, uh, November. Thank you so much. It's not included with the previous bid. Solid. Thank you so much. 39 is uh, I have an issue with the amount because of the location and I think it should be increased because under the discussion out there under the contract, the additionally bi-weekly services was also to include Highway 279 and Flash Hills Road. And so, and that is not on here and I would just like that to get, because it literally upon, on the discussion when we initially started with the Brightview contract under the public works as all those was the major core those was discussed and I'm not seeing that on here and I need this how we add 279 and flash shows road uh, for those additional bi week uh, uh, street services for those sides for those side streets uh, for those two as specifically spelled out so this amount should be increased. Right, can we bring that back? Because I'm not sure that we have quotes for that at this time. It, yes, to yes ma'am. Oh, I'm, to I'm told it's included. Somebody starting that bullshit. He talking. It says it's included. So, cause I like it. You know, the words be on the. Because he is that in black and white. Is I just kind of see that. As because the constituency would like to see that. But 
if we can just have that reissue, if it's, can, if it's uh, included, uh, just with it spelled out on here, that would be awesome. Because the constituency is, we had a call about this last night on my Monday call, so um, that'd be great. That's it. Out of you. So, just a, a point of information: it's included, but you're asking for the the wording, the wording and the title to be amended to include. Because if it's not written, it's not said. So I just kind of, if we right, can right. just I'm, write I'm, it out for I'm, the I'm, clarification I'm, to bring, you know, so I can see. Yeah, just helping you with your substitute motion to amend the title yes, to sir. include these words. Is that, yes, sir. that's what you're doing? For the record. For the record. All right. Uh, is there a second for that amendment? Do we need a second? Okay. All right. Uh, we have a second from, from uh, Councilman Sebastian for that substitute motion. All right. Um, Councilwoman Pritchett. So, Highway 279 Old National, Flat Shoals Road, these, these are things that are already included. This is talking about additional, additional, in addition to what's already included. I understand what you mean by the constituency, but my constituency, when I have explained to them what Brightview is doing in addition to the suites the street sweeper and other services, I've already explained that it's included. So to add these two streets to an additional weekly landscape, I would think would be legally incorrect because we're not part of an addition, we're not part of the add-on. And um, although, Madam City Manager, I do understand that the Public Works Director was not prepared to speak, but for a point of clarity, just so that the councilman can be um, reassured or clear that it's already included. It's already included in the current contract. I'm very clear with that. I'm talking about the addition of the You had a question? You had a question? Because I'm about to call a question. All right, I'm going to uh, uh, a a a, a, mm -hmm. uh, a question of legal appropriateness was made, and I would just like to hear from our city attorney about amending this item. If I track everything correctly, the dollar amount to do the services includes the streets, but for minute purposes or for public record, I think. Councilman Reeves said he wanted to make sure the biweekly services included Highway 279 and Flat Shoals. So we're not making a change to the terms, conditions, scope of work. We're just reflecting for the minutes that the biweekly service, uh, to make it clear, does include Flat Shoals and Highway 279. All right. Um, are people able to get into the queue? I'm just, I'm, 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 I'm just whoever I hear in my ear. I think I heard Councilwoman Gums. This, this question is for, thank you, Mayor, for recognizing me. This question is for the city manager. I, I'm comfortable with the amount that we are um, spending, but one of the things that I have noticed um, is that they're not as thorough as we would like them to be. What is the process for reevaluating also making sure that we're holding them accountable because that's my main concern is that you know if they're picking up because I see things that help happen in other cities as well um, and I know the resident had came up and spoke about the accountability of it so can we address that or how or how will we see oversee that sure so one of the things that we are doing which I think will will put Public Works in a position to more effectively manage these contracts is in the budget that you just approved, thank you. We have stood up a general services department. The general services department will be overseeing city facilities, um, city fleet. Public Works will be able to concentrate on those things that are in the right of way. Maintaining the the right of way through this contract is one of their primary responsibilities. So my expectation is that they'll be able to ramp up their oversight efforts. Okay, thank you. Mm 
The chair recognizes District 4, Councilman Sebastian. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Madam City Manager, I have a question about the renovations of the at the City Grove Tiny Fire Station, as we call it, <laughs> um, making it larger. We we did install a um, a solar system to carry that building. Do are we going to have enough capacity with that current system to carry the rest of the building as it's ex, um, expanded? That's just the question I had. Sure, I imagine that they're going to be expanding by, I believe, three to 4,000 square foot. And so they would have to evaluate what's there and if necessary, expand in order to power the additional space. My understanding is we're gonna be adding additional bays, community rooms, and then also an overall, um, an overall renovation to improve quality of life for the firefighters that live at that station by upgrading. Okay, so we will we will do an assessment to figure out if the current solar system can carry the rest of it. And right, the full scope. Then you'll come back. The full scope is in your packet. Yeah, I, it's very detailed. I read it. Very yeah, detailed. I I don't remember seeing anything on the the solar system to be exact. That's why I was asking. And Thank it, you. it will be all solar. It will continue to be all solar. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? All right, uh, we have a substitute motion on the floor to amend the wording that appears in the minutes for this agenda item. I will take a vote for that substitute motion by a show of hands. Court, that is unanimous. All right, returning to the original motion to approve all of these items 38 through 41. Uh, take a vote by a show of hands. Record that as unanimous. All right, and that brings us to the last item on our agenda. Which is the second executive session. All right, uh, before I entertain a motion, I do just want to uh, take a point of privilege to remind uh, all of the homeowners to check your, uh, your mortgage, check with your bank to make sure that you are not double paying for our sanitation service. Um, and I will entertain a motion uh, to go into an executive session. I'm, I'm a, I move that we recess an executive session for real estate litigation and uh, personnel and cyber personnel security. and cyber security. I know it was all of that, <laughs> but all the things. Yes. All right. Uh, is there a second? been properly moved and seconded. Uh, we'll take a, any discussion. All right, we'll take a vote by show of hands. I record that is unanimous. We are recessed at 7.29 p.m. for executive session. Good night, Shannon.
and we are back from executive session. I will entertain a motion to reconvene. Motion. Second. It has been properly moved and seconded that we reconvene. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, are we ready for the question? Yes. Can we do this by a show of hands? Record that is unanimous 5-0. We are reconvened at 8.08 p.m. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Are the, were there any actions coming out of executive session that require a public vote? Yes, ma'am. I believe there is one. Thank you. Um, I move to authorize the city attorney to use his authority to engage and compensate outside legal counsel pursuant to section 1-3009. Second. It has been properly moved and seconded that we approve um, the city attorney to engage and compensate outside legal counsel. Are we, is there any discussion? Hearing none, are we ready for the question? Mr. Clerk, can we do a roll call vote for this one? Roll call vote. Councilman Morrell? Yes. Councilman Gubbs? Yes. Councilmember Willis? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Williams Brown? Yes. Councilmember Pritchett? Yes. That motion was approved 5 0. Thank you. Mr. Clerk, is there any other business before the council this evening? Uh, there is no other business that I'm aware of. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. In that case, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Move, I move to adjourn. Second. It is there properly moved and seconded that we adjourn. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, are we ready for the question? Yes. Can we do this by a show of hands? I record that as unanimous. We are adjourned at 8.09 p.m. Have a good evening. Thank you Thank and you. good night.